I want to share with you a most magnificent discovery that we made last week. This is the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. What a sight! Breathtakingly beautiful as far as the eye can see, God's bounteous beauty is evident. The trees cover the hillsides, and on display were all of the different types of wood that's found on these hillsides. You can also see the creek running through it where we did see some kayakers going by. The trees provide not only benefit to the environment, but the source of so many opportunities for beautiful creation. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use some found wood in creative ways. My name is Lisa. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, a special welcome. This is an image of a creation that I made in a previous video. I used a napkin with this darling raccoon face and I used this piece of found wood, which I prepared in ways I'll show you in this video. On a recent farm road walk, Daisy and I visited with some of our friendly neighbors. I'm always amazed by the warm welcome we receive when we walk by these farms. I delight in sharing these with you because I never cease to be amazed by their friendliness and curiosity toward us each time we come by. A recent storm had knocked down some more pieces of wood, so I was delighted to find these with these interesting contours and pretty bark on the backside. I used boiling water to flush out any dirt on them, and then after they thoroughly dry, I use this polycrylic Minwax product to varnish over the entirety of them, front and back. I have these cutouts, this little hummingbird peering out of its nest, as well as this butterfly, but I think I'm going to use the Dollar Tree butterfly uh, against the smaller piece of wood. I'm just applying a nice heavy coat over all the contours and crevices of the wood. That way we'll have a nice seal over the wood. I'm going over, as you see, all of the different um, surfaces, and once I get that done, we'll let it dry. Now, just a tip I want to share with you. I often compare products and try different applications. And in my previous video, in which I decorated the wood for the raccoon, I used polyvine varnish. And that really did enhance the wood by making the grain more rich in color. This provides a nice clear top coat, but doesn't give you the richness of color. Fortunately, though, there's enough color in this wood that I think it'll turn out pretty. So now that I'm finishing up with this nice heavy coat, I'm going to go ahead and set both pieces of wood aside. Now that they've thoroughly dried, we're ready to decorate. For one, I'm going to use a cutout, and for the other, I'm going to use the butterfly from a package from Dollar Tree. I'm also using the Mod Podge in this small bottle from Dollar Tree. You can see that using the found wood coupled with this butterfly out of a package enables you to create a project for less than $1, and it's going to be very sweet. I just have to decide now the orientation, and I think I'll go ahead and attach it right here so that we still see that pretty contour in the wood. To attach the butterfly, I'm going to use hot glue. And for the other cutout, which is on like a heavy calendar type paper, I'm going to use Mod Podge. And I'm going to apply it liberally right onto that wooden surface. And then I'm going to go ahead and add on that cutout. As you see now, I'm just applying it in a nice even coat using my paintbrush to smooth it out. And then I'm going to position the hummingbird peeking out of his little nest just so that the beak extends beyond the end of the wood. I'm using my fingers to impress all of the paper down into all of those crevices. Because this is a thicker calendar type of paper, it's not as pliable as a napkin would be. So it is more durable, it won't tear as easily, but applying it to get it down into all of the crevices takes a little more effort. You see I'm adding Mod Podge over the surface as well to seal it on nicely. And then I'm going to use my fingertips to work it down into all the crevices contours. I'm using my heat gun just to expedite the drying process 
because I'm eager to finish this up and show you the beautiful finished product. We have a lot of space to the left of the decorative side, so I decided to enliven it with a spray of flowers. I also decided to add some twigs to the nest. Trimming and hot gluing some twigs that I had over the surface of the nest gives it more of a three-dimensionality and makes it more cohesive with the background. Hot glue works really well to attach these broken twigs. And I'm also going to add, using hot glue, some leaves and a flower that I had in my stash to the uh, undecorated surface of the wood. You see, this just gives you ideas for ways to use found elements and cut out pictures or items from Dollar Tree in the sticker section, which is where I found the butterfly. And you can create such lovely decorative items for your home. Here I'm just adding the twigs in a very natural, random kind of way so that it again ties in with the background. Next, I'll show you how I'm going to add some leaves and a nice cheerful flower to that lower side. But before we add those final embellishments, I want to go ahead and show you how I'm going to easily add the butterfly onto this piece of wood. I want it to have as natural appearance as possible, so I'm just going to add some hot glue where it won't be visible, and I'm going to add it into that crevice, and I'm going to fold back the butterfly wings so that it gives it a very natural look as though the butterfly has alighted on the wood and is just resting there. After I put it in place against the hot glue, I'm just pressing with my finger so that it will hold. And you can see that's quite lovely and a really fun way to use a Dollar Tree sticker that's just one out of a package uh, against that piece of found wood. And I'm thinking that might even be fun to use that now that we've created that pretty embellishment Maybe it would be pretty to work into a fall wreath, and I think we might give that a try next. But before we create our wreath, let's go ahead and finish embellishing our little hummingbird nest. Because the tones in the hummingbird and its nest are very muted, I decided to use some muted green leaves that I had in my stash. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue three of those leaves on the left side there. I don't wanna cover up the beauty of the wood grain at the bottom. It's such a pretty contour area that I wanna have that still visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the leaves a little bit higher up on the wood. A few drops of hot glue works great to attach the three leaves. And I'm putting my first one in position and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the other two, just adding drops of hot glue for each. These leaves are really pretty and I think are the finishing touch along with that flower we're going to add to really make this into a beautiful uh, arrangement that will serve, as you'll see, as a lovely decorative piece. Here's the flower I'm going to add after I put on that final third leaf. And hot glue works so well and stays very concealed. And now that that third leaf is attached, you can see I'm adding a nice pool of hot glue uh, onto which I will sit our lovely flower blossom. Again, it has beautiful muted tones, so it doesn't detract from the overall color scheme that we have. And I think it's just beautiful. I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. As so many projects do, this one evolved. Uh, when I realized it needed more uh, to enhance it, I think it just took on a life of its own. Here I have it displayed on my entry hall table on a little Dollar Tree easel, which is concealed by the arrangement. You could also create a hanging loop on the back. I hope this provides inspiration, and I would love to hear in the comments below ideas you have for using found elements. 
I've only recently discovered just how much fun it is to use these pieces of found wood in creative ways. I'm really getting addicted to this process. And now I want to turn to creating a beautiful fall wreath. And for that, we'll use this wire wreath form that I bought from the Dollar Tree for $1.25. I also found some beautiful ribbon at Dollar Tree as well as at the Dollar General. And for this project, I'm going to use the rolls that I purchased at the Dollar General. I just really love these color combinations and I think they're just so perfect for the autumn harvest colors that I want to uh, bring out in this wreath. So we're going to use that along with this lovely little wagon that I got for a dollar at the Dollar General. I also think as an embellishment, this butterfly on the wood would be just beautiful. But I think for this color combination, I'll choose the wagon. And next time, we'll make a wreath that we can use the butterfly as our adornment. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these ribbons and I'm going to use this burlap orange color. It's wired, which makes it really nice. And I'm just going to wrap the entire wreath using this ribbon. Now that the orange burlap ribbon has been secured with hot glue on the back side of the wreath, I'm taking a length of this plaid ribbon and just folding it into itself and pinching it in the center. Because it's wired, you can easily form those loops just as you wish. Then take a small piece of the same ribbon and use it to wrap around that center to hold it in place. It's that easy to create your first bow. We'll make three of these, two in the plaid and one in the patterned print, and then we'll just stack them, attaching them with hot glue to the wreath. This charming ribbon with this pattern of trucks and pumpkins was just one of many charming prints. I thought this one would be very pretty because it kind of mimics the wagon that we're going to use as the embellishment. I like those wheels. So here again, just folding it into itself, forming the bow, and then pinching it in the center, we'll go ahead and tie it together. In this case, I had a tie from a bread bag, and I'm just going to use that wire to wrap around it. And there you have it. In just a minute or two, you've created three lovely bows that can now be stacked together. And you can choose any combination of prints and patterns and colors that go well with your own color palette. I made this one uh, with the classic fall colors for my mom's home. And I think it turned out really sweet. You can see that stacking those ribbons gives you the look of a very full puffy bow. Hot glue is the perfect choice for adhering these to the wreath form. And I did them one at a time, just hot gluing the first one to the wreath and then adding that drop of hot glue to attach the second and third bow. 
This wired ribbon works so well because it allows you to form those loops so nicely once you've adhered the bows. The hot glue also worked great to attach the embellishment, the little wagon that says thankful. Wreaths can be made simply or elaborately, but I think this one made for just a little over $5 and in about five minutes works so well to add a little bit of fall cheer to any spot in your home. Dollar Tree has a great selection of glass vases, many selections in the dollar and a quarter price point, as well as larger, very nice ones in the $3 section, as well as in the $5 section. So upcoming, we're going to be using the vases from Dollar Tree to create some amazing vases in different kinds of ways. In a recent video, I showed my niece opening several handcrafted gifts that I made for her birthday, one of which was a beautiful vase that was $1.25 from Dollar Tree and which I decorated in a very sparkly way. That will be demonstrated on my upcoming video as well as many more ways to use those Dollar Tree vases. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. I hope you'll join me again. In the meantime, take care and God bless.